And this is not a public hearing item tonight, so we will not be hearing um, feedback from public members. So it looks like the applicant here, and just so I just want to make sure I'm pronouncing is, is it Kari or Carrie? Carrie. Carrie, okay, thank you very much. Aubrey, it looks like we have the applicant. It looks like Brooke from the planning. It looks like Mr. Nielsen from the city attorney's office. Is this everyone that we're expecting? Did you say someone else was going to join? Um, the zoning administrator has not joined yet. Um, I've sent her a couple of links, but I'm not quite sure if she's okay. having problems we'll give, or not. We'll give her another minute and, uh, okay. Thanks. Uh, she's joining now. I just saw her. She is, she, she is connected yeah. now. Thank you. Okay. Well, I think with. With everyone here, and uh, we are recording, uh, I think we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, good evening, uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Matt Worthland, an appeals hearing officer for the city of Salt Lake City. Uh, it is September 22nd, 2022. And uh, this afternoon, we are uh, hearing an appeal of the historic landmark commission decision regarding a minor alteration uh, application with respect to some fencing property located at 665 South 600 East. Uh, and this is regarding PLNAPP 2022 00796. And uh, and it, it does appear that we do have the uh, appellant with us uh, this afternoon. 
and and, and we'll have an opportunity to hear from you. And bef before doing that, I just want to make sure we're, we we understand the scope of 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 the hearing tonight. Uh, as you know, it is not a, a, a rehearing of every detail to determine uh, uh, to make any decisions regarding the certificate of appropriateness or the fencing only to the extent that we are reviewing the decisions of the historic landmark commission in their uh, uh, issued decision uh, from uh, the July 4, 2022 meeting. And, uh, and, and so I just want to uh, emphasize for really for the benefit of you, Carrie, just to understand that it, the, the, the way the city code works um, it, is that it's, it's your job uh, to, to identify in the record those areas that, that you believe um, that where the Historic Landmark Commission may have violated a, a law, statute, or ordinance of some kind. Um, and uh, uh, essentially, I'm required by city statute to uphold that decision unless um, we, we can show and the, and the language is substantial evidence in the record is the language of the statute uh, that gives us that guidance. Uh, that it violated some kind of uh, city ordinance or or other law for that matter, and and so if 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 you can kind of um, take the time you need to lay out how you believe that, that happened, um, that that would be that would be helpful for me, um, and, and and just so you know and understand, I have uh, read the entire staff report, both from uh, for the hearing tonight, as well as from the original landmark decision, as well as viewed the um, video tape of, of the commission hearing, um, as well as visited the property. Now, it was just a drive-by visit. <laughs> uh, uh, so anyway, I'm, I, I think I'm familiar with, uh, with, with the, the uh, circumstances of, of the case and would just Love to hear. So I think how we proceed is uh, first, uh, Carrie, is to give you an opportunity just to kind of uh, uh, walk me through and help me understand your concerns of where you think the Landmark Commission um, was in error um, or violated the law. And, and then we'll give the city if, if they need any uh, response uh, to that or would like to add anything to our discussion. So, Carrie, is that okay? I'll, I'll turn the time over to you now just to, uh, to give me your side of things. Sure. So, um, Aubrey, you're going to give me the uh, ability to share. Thank you. So I will share starting with the letter that I received um, July 15th after the Historic Landmark Commission meeting on July 14th. And this is what was in the letter explaining why the decision was made based on the zoning ordinance, the purpose of the ordinance, the purpose of the preservation district and the um, purpose of the historic um, preservation guidelines and testimony from the public. So I will address each of those things. You can see this, correct? Right? I want to make sure everybody can see this. Yes. Yeah, yes. Thank you. Thank you. So um, I will note that at the end of the meeting, when it was time for the um, historic landmark commission to vote, um, the statement that was made was we have to vote based on the code. It wasn't we vote based on the guideline. It was vo we vote based on the code, which I can only assume they meant the ordinance. Um, so 
uh, when I go to the purpose that was cited in my letter, um, my fence actually does not violate the purpose. Um, it actually protects, preserves. Um, I'm participating in redevelopment of the area that is my home. Um, I've had comp um, people speak to me about the um, enhancement and attraction and, of course, you know, the pride in the property and the, the work that I'm doing and how well the fence um, actually complements. Um, the ordinance that I that I was cited in this letter says that a fence should actually be made of durable quite uh, quality materials and they specifically cite vinyl. And that is what I included when I made my application was that I was replicating really to preserve the um, the look of the original fence, which was a, a picket fence with a trellis. And I was replacing it um, at significant cost with a quality, durable, and low maintenance fence that preserved the look of the home. Um, also, in the zoning chapter that was referenced, the uh, fence needs to preserve and reflect the character of the home and the face of the home. And you can see here in this picture that I have a white picket um, style porch railing and columns and there's the fence that I was installing, which is really trying to replicate the fence that was there before. Again, speaking to the character of the home. <clears throat> and then when we go to the historic guideline, uh, I just want to reiterate that it is a guideline. It's not a code. And I was told they were voting based on a code. And the code that I you know, found was the zoning code, the zoning ordinance. In the guideline, they speak to a preference of wood, iron, and wire, but does not exclude vinyl. And so the way it was presented to me was vinyl was excluded, and they were voting on a code that excluded vinyl, and that's actually not true. Um, in regard to public testimony, I did submit letters from my neighbors. I had uh, at least seven letters from my neighbors who actually live in the historic district who feel positively about my home. Two people spoke at the Landmark Commission meeting making public comments, one of which I didn't even know who shared that the desire was for me to be able to complete my fence and that you know there was a, some thoughts around it being um, durable, clean, easy to maintain. And then lastly, as far as public testimony goes, um, during the Central City Historic Tour, I had nothing but compliments from people walking by telling me how well the fence went, um, looked with the character of the home being a historic home. So that is, that is my response regarding public testimony. Uh, there is also this white vinyl picket fence that is four buildings north of mine on 600 East. It's not a very clean looking or nice white vinyl fence, but it is a white vinyl fence. It does run all the way to the sidewalk. And that is in the Central City Historic District. Um, and so really my, my ask is that um, this decision be overturned, um, that my fence permit be approved because I don't see that I violate any ordinance or code as was stated to me um, by both the Zoning and the Historic Landmark Commission. And that I do actually meet the requirements of preserving the character of the home and um, installing a clean, durable, long lasting white vinyl fence that replicates the old rotted wooding fence, wooden fence that was there. And really without going into any other details, um, as you've requested, I'm just trying to stick with the facts of the reason I was told that the historic landmark commission denied my, my permit. So, I can stop sharing if I can make this bigger again. Um, or Aubrey, you can have me stop sharing. See if I can get there. Great, Carrie, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, uh, anyone, Brooke or or uh, Paul, uh, just wanted to see if there's any kind of response from the city, understanding that I have read the materials in the in the staff report, including the response from council. Thank you, Mr. Worthman, and I'm 
appreciate you acknowledging that. I, I don't intend to um, go through uh, my brief word for word. Um, as, but as I mentioned in my brief, there were three arguments made. The first and the third point to um, standards that don't necessarily pertain in the uh, historic district, uh, or sorry, the first one doesn't necessarily pertain to the one, to the standards in the historic district. Um, yes, uh, vinyl fencing is allowed generally in residential districts. However, the H Historic Preservation Overlay District um, has uh, different standards that are uh, more restrictive. And as uh, noted in the code that I, I cited, um, those uh, provisions where there's a conflict prevail over the general residential um, standards in the code. Um, the third argument um, pertains to uh, new construction in a historic district um, or for uh, non-contributing structures uh, under, uh, I believe it was, um, I gotta look. I think it was, Brooke can help me out here what the standard is. It's H or, no, we're, yeah, we're, in, we're in G. The standards for um, new construction or non-contributing structures is, correct, H. So 21A34020H. Um, so we're, we're, not, we're not talking about that. Um, and so I, we didn't even analyze whether uh, that argument could um, had any merit because she was uh, the the appellant citing a, a standard that doesn't apply. Um, really, the main argument here is, and as you've heard, um, that what uh, staff and the planning commission look to in determining whether uh, a vinyl fence is appropriate in the historic district is um, whether we're talking about standards or guidelines. And um, and what the impact of those are, uh, yes, m the appellant is correct. Uh, Ms. Gardner is correct that uh, we're operating from um, a, a set of what are referred to as guidelines. They were adopted by the city council, and as you note uh, in my brief and in the code, as well as in those guidelines, that those guidelines are there to uh, help uh, assist in the interpretation of. The actual standards. So, if you look at what is in the staff report um, and what the landmark commission relied on, were the actual standards in 21A 34020G, um, and particularly the standards that staff uh, found that weren't met and, and that the landmark commission adopted those findings were G2 and G3. Um, and I got to pull up the staff report. It's attachment E to the staff report where those uh, standards are analyzed using the uh, guidelines as uh, an, an aid to help interpret those. Um, and staff and the, the Landmark Commission found that those two standards were not met. Um, I'd go through the standards, but. Uh, they're they're in the staff report. You know what they are. Historic character of a property shall be retained and preserved. Um, and then the other is uh, the structures uh, shall be recognized as products of their own time um, and alterations that have no historical basis, which seek to create a false sense of history uh, or architecture are not allowed. And the uh, the appellant's own uh, appeal document. Uh, notes that um, I'm trying to find the language. Uh, it's on page two. Um, she refers to it as a more durable and long lasting replica. And so, I mean, she she's acknowledging that this is a replica of the wood fencing material, which violates that G3 standard. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Anything else from anyone in the city? Okay. Um, so, so Carrie, let me, let me just 
talk to you about my um, my my challenge here, and, and and that is, and and just to help you understand a little bit of of, of some limit limitations here in, in in this hearing, and that is, as I understand, you have laid for laid out. Um, one, there's just some common sense, what looks good and what doesn't. And, uh, and unfortunately, this is not a, a hearing where we can determine whether you're the white vinyl picket fence. I mean, um, I'll grant you, I, I, I think it, 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 it looks nice. Now, the historic standards are not based on thankfully for everybody in this city on what I think uh, necessarily looks good. Um, and and, and uh, e even though neighbors and others are supportive of, of what you're, you're trying to do, the, the, the power in the city given uh, be, because of where your property is located does give uh, some additional authority to this historic landmarks commission to interpret the guidelines and policy that have been put in place by the city council and um i i i i'm afraid that much of your concerns are issues that unfortunately are policy issues that you would have to take up with the city council to change the law because what i'm stuck with uh carrie is that I have to, I'm required by statute to uphold the decision unless there's substantial evidence that there is a violation of, of law, statute, ordinance, or whatever it might be. And as has been pointed out, um, even though vinyl is clearly a, an acceptable form of, uh, of, of material in a fence generally, there, there is this over historic overlay zone that has some different policies that you that you mentioned may sound as if they are suggestive in nature and not binding. The, the, the problem is, is it does telegraph a, a policy or a desire of the city to go a certain way. And so what that does, Carrie, is it gives latitude to the historic landmark commission members to make a judgment call, and, and and it's it's not a always a a black and white. It's to make a judgment call, and and I cannot substitute my own judgment for the judgment of the of the historic landmark commission members, unless they have clearly violated the law, and and, and unfortunately, I have yet to see and and, and do not have not found anything in, in the record um, on my own or what has been presented by you that suggests they have violated any law, statute, or ordinance. Everything has been that I, you would have interpreted it differently or that I think it should be interpreted differently. And, and so I, I, I'm going through this, Carrie, just, just for your benefit. I don't mean to sound condescending. I'm not meaning to be. I'm mostly just wanting to help you understand the limitations of this process. And, 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 and I know it can be a frustrating thing uh, to uh, spend the time and money and effort to go through this process and then be told, uh, in fact, it, it's, it's not, uh, not appropriate. But my hands are tied as as an appeals hearing officer based on again the, the the code of what I can decide and so my decision tonight is can, is can to I, uphold. yeah 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 I, go ahead yeah I just wanted to make two more comments um, yeah that's fine go ahead I just wanted to address the the uh, comment about me knowing that my fence was a replica um, there was no fence when this home was was built. So it's not a replica of anything historic. It is a replica of the fence that was there that went well with the character of the home, right? So yeah, that's a good, and that's a great said, point because I did notice that in the the historic pictures of the structure from I think the 1930s or 40s, you're right. right. I did not see a particular yeah. fence there. Yeah. Um the only other comment that I guess, well, I have two other comments. The one the the other comment I guess is that um you know, using the specific language that the historic um, landmark commission was voting based on a code, 
when they were actually voting based on a historic guideline preference, to me, that's pretty clear language that that was not factually correct. And then my last comment is, um, I was actually told by the Landmark Commission to appeal the decision. They were the ones that told me to appeal the decision. So it's interesting that they would tell me to appeal the decision um, if they didn't feel like there was in some sense, maybe that it wasn't totally a fair decision. So that's why I went this route. Okay. Yeah, I can't speak to uh, the last comment as to why they told you. I know that I think they we instruct all everyone who is not satisfied with the decision that they have that opportunity to to appeal decisions. I don't know what they were thinking or what they were telegraphing by that statement. Um, but but again, I'm 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 limited to. The, the the what's on the record of of the of the historic landmark decision and 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 and, and I unfortunately do, do not find that evidence that there was any violation of a law statute or ordinance um, and, and, and in effect and so my decision does remain to uphold that historic landmark uh, commission and I'll provide a written uh, re response in the coming days but that's my decision tonight. Uh, thank you. That's the only matter before us. Um, and, and again, thank you for everyone's time and efforts uh, tonight, but that would conclude our appeals hearing uh, this afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Thank you.